I must say though, before Khmer, uh, the whole thing is, is uh, uh, kind of inspired by, the whole, whole concept was inspired by a book by, uh, called uh, Ficciones by Jose, Jose Luis Borges, Labyrinths. So it was called Labyrinths in the beginning. And there is a, a lot of the titles have references to, to the book. Like there is something called Book of Sand and there is, I call it Song of Sand. There is a, a, a Fum, which is like, a, um, that is Cambodian. It's, it's like a small family uh, of, of, um, of cottages. So the place in the middle where everybody's sitting, like that's the Fum. Cleun is, is from uh, uh, Borges and uh, On Stream is from Borges and so there is, uh, there is many references. So uh, beginning I was thinking about the uh, labyrinths but then that is very, again, very... Uh, too, uh, it, it's, it's like closing, <laughs> you know? But Khmer has this, uh, this open Thing and you don't know and it can have it mean so many things. So, so I'm glad uh, we changed from Labyrinth to Khmer. The whole progress of, of uh, Khmer was, uh, we started, I started in the studio like 92, 93 and uh, I had a lot of things even from the late 80s that I, I, some themes and some things which I've been working on. It started out as uh, experimenting in the studio where I played, uh, uh, I did the, the percussion things, uh, we used samples, I played the trumpet, I played the bass and some bass lines and, um, and things and um, then I got this commission piece uh, which was in, I got it in 95 and I, we did it in 96. It was a festival in Norway called the Vosaya, Vosa Jazz. And then I thought this is a good thing. We, I, I um, got more focused and uh, brought the band together and we did the concert and then we just went into the studio and just did this small extras after that and uh, then the Khmer was finished. And I, I kind of wanted it to reflect all the things that I liked and that I listened to and to try to make a mash of it and to try to um, um, yeah, just try to make it organic and, and, uh, and, uh, and good. I started to work in, with a, a friend of mine called Ulf Hulan. He had a studio, um, the second floor of Rainbow Studio, which was the, the ECM studio. So we just called it Over the Rainbow. Studio. I would say the development of, of uh, the whole album was done in the studio. Um, but also, <clears throat> you can say that it, it was like a platform, like uh, where, and then I know uh, Ivan comes in here and he do these things and uh, so it kind of, uh, and then the drums and there's, there was like two drummer. I had this idea, I want to have one drummer which is like really super tight and that was Per Lindvald from, uh, he used to play in ABBA even in the, in the 80s there or in, yeah 80s um, and Rune Arnesen who was more moving so it was like two drummers and they kind of just moved around a bit like this and then uh, also later uh, I invited a DJ to be in the band also DJ Strange Fruit and um, and uh, Audun Ali and the bass player. So, but bef all before this was more like me in the studio with uh, Ulf and uh, finding strange samples and um, using. And of course I wanted to have Ivan because I played with him, Ivan Arset, the guitar player, and I played with him um, uh, several bands in the late 80s and beginning of the 90s. And we just like, like this. And also I wanted to have another guy who's unfortunately dead now. Uh, Morten Mölster is a very good guitar player. He's more like into the prog thing. Um, and then it was uh, Roger Ludvigsen who's uh, playing with Mari Boyne a lot. Uh, and I, I shared flat with him, as far as I can remember. <laughs> um, guitar is like more... Uh, um, uh, 
how shall I say it? It's more flexible. You can, you can move around, you know. And uh, also because I played with uh, Ivan, and um, um, I always had had this thing with guitar. So there is something about string instruments and uh, and trumpet that I, I really I like. And Ivan is is but he's he's I mean I, I just tuned it out and uh, just used it more like a, a contrast the 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 sound of the guitar. So but the Ivan he he's uh, he's master of all this. Uh, different developments of sounds and together and uh, opens up uh, soundscape and uh, so <clears throat> he was the main guitar player in the band and, and uh, Morten he was uh, he also had this kind of uh, um, uh, King Crimson kind of attitude you know like uh, it tuned the guitar differently, tuned it in fifths instead of in fourths, and and uh, so the whole sound of it was was different. And he also comes from a more of free jazz thing, and this rock thing, and but very open-minded he was. So I thought I wanted to have two guitar players, at least for the first concert, the the the, the commission piece, and then. Uh, Rog Roger, who was more, he played a little bass, he played this and he played acoustic, he played this uh, very opening, this uh, that is like a, a kind of a dulcimer or a the which is the... So, yeah, I just brought them in and, uh, and uh, then just merge it together in a way, in how I wanted it to sound. And then I started to really get uh, into uh, drum and bass. I, I liked the drum and bass thing. So I was on drum and bass and I met this guy TB, a Norwegian uh, drum and bass producer, DJ. And uh, yeah, I went to clubs, listened to Groove Rider and, uh, you know, all these guys. In the very early 90s, I, I, I was, uh, there was uh, some really uh, cool clubs in Oslo, like uh, Head On and Jazzid and Skansen, which was like the former uh, toil uh, public toilet at the Rathaus in Oslo. <laughs> Very cool club. I, I think in a way these guys that running these clubs were more like uh, uh, liberal and more open-minded than the jazz clubs. There was, um, you had a drum and bass and then you have also for me that I've always like loved this ambient music like colors where you just like the Eno stuff, I mean the Apollo from Eno. Also uh, this, this repetitive thing like uh, Steve Reich and uh, who, who did a fantastic album on ECM by the way. I don't want it to be like jazz, you know, or I don't want it to be like ambient, I don't want it to be, I want it to be like uh, just music which has, there is references to, to many, many things. This is, uh, and even now, uh, this is how I, I, I like uh, the music I play to be. Like there is references from anything and, um, it doesn't mean that it's less pure or anything. It means just that it's more including. I was really keen on, on having visuals. So I, the first guy I hired for this concert was the visual guy. <laughs> and uh, also talked to, an, to a, a painter that he just did this shock one, one line. And then I wanted uh, also the whole... So it was like uh, the whole package, like really, really... I used all the money on, on that I got there for on the visuals and uh, I used it on uh, and it was a big big success you know um, and then from there on and then the, of course the album came and suddenly it was like the whole world or at least first Europe I mean uh, 
started to travel and play festivals everywhere in Europe and with that concept as, that we had. There was a lot of things happening at the same time. At the same time as the record came out, I became father for the first time. Uh, which was difficult <laughs> because there was suddenly there was a, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of, of uh, requests, and then I couldn't just leave. Then, even though I mean, I, I think I left uh, a week after she was born. I went on a big tour, and which is I wouldn't do it now, you know. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so it opened up different audience. Uh, it opened up for, uh, 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 you got more money so I could uh, use a nightliner, for instance, so we could uh, just go around and, and uh, um, suddenly it, it was not so difficult to live from music because sometimes, I mean, to live as a freelance musician is it's not easy. And suddenly, that uh, there was the, a lot of uh, uh, people wanted Khmer, so and uh, uh, um, promoters. So it it was um, changed my life in many ways, and um, maybe not so much on a personal level, but more on a, on a professional level and. And then you meet people, and I meet people like Bill, and uh, uh, yeah, many, many people. Um, and also now later, uh, it's, it, it, uh, I'm sure the development of this makes that makes it possible. Now I work a little bit with uh, Mino Sinelu. I've been working a little bit Trilo Gurtu, for the tabla player, and and. Um, there are more requests. If this comes from Khmer, I mean, it started with Khmer, for sure. Um, but then, then I thought, I, I don't want to just do Khmer again, again, like the rest of my life. Which is, it, it would be like uh, unbearable. Not because I don't like it, but it was like after, it was so much of it. So I, it was like years, I didn't, never listened to it even, you know, and then uh, Strange Fruit, uh, he said, you must listen to it, the DJ. I mean, it's really good. And then I listened to it. And then you listen like it's not your album, you know, when you had to uh, get the distance from it. And I can hear that, it, that it's good. But maybe things now I listen to it, I could, I want to do differently. But, <laughs> but then I can do that in, in, uh, in other, on other albums. The thing is that I never thought about Khmer as something that was going to be a success. I thought of it that uh, like maybe if I, if I can sell 1000 albums and uh, I can come and play some places, you know, and uh, I would be really happy. So I didn't have any expectations at all. I kind of felt that when Dam Manfred was dancing and, and uh, around uh, to Klön, I was like, wow, <laughs> I've never seen him dance before. So he was uh, very happy with it. So, um, yeah. No, those were the days, yeah? Now it's different days. <laughs>